vlog one. Today we are in Jamaica and we are making homemade bread cake. Now to be fair, this cake is not the most popular dessert in Jamaica. In fact, it is mostly eaten in the United States, but it originates from Jamaica and that is enough for me. Now this cake is quite interesting I would say. It has pineapples and bananas in it. I have never baked pineapples and I don't know what to expect, but I'll know soon enough. Anyway, let's get baking, shall we? To make the homemade bed cake, we need some flour, allspice, cinnamon, salt, baking powder, super duper ripe bananas, a can of pineapple, eggs, vegetable oil, white and brown sugar, and some vanilla extract. I will be using three 9 inch round tins. Get your tins ready by first greasing the bottom. This way the parchment sticks easily. Then grease the parchment and around the tin. No cake is sticking after this. First thing is to combine the flour, allspice, cinnamon, salt and baking powder in a large bowl. Whisk thoroughly and set aside. The next step is to get the other ingredients combined. Mash your bananas. No, we are not using it whole. The size of my 4 bananas should give me about 2 cups and just to be sure, I will measure it out. I do not want to screw up absolutely anything. So yeah, I got 2 cups. Next up is the pineapple. Open the can if you decide to and take some water out because it is a lot. The chunks are quite big so I am going to mash with this thin. We need 8 ounces which is about 225 grams. Then the vanilla extracts, the sugars, oil and the eggs. There is really no order to the way I added these other ingredients, just add however you like. Get your whisk and mix everything until you no know further mixing will change the state of your mixed mixture. Get the other dry ingredients and pour the wet into it. As you see, you do not need a mixer for this cake. Everything comes together nicely with a whisk. It does take some arm strength but it is not in any way brutal. You already know the drill by now. Stop mixing when everything is nicely combined. Now is when you add some toasted chopped up pecans if you are using it. I am not. A quick mix with my spatula and it is ready to bake. To make sure each thing gets roughly the same amount of butter, I will be using a measuring cup. Each thing got 2 cups each. Bake in a 177 degree preheated oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Your cake is ready when whatever you poke in it comes out clean. So I have a bad track record making cream cheese frosting. It always ends up as a dripping. I did some research on the internet and the problem was too much moisture. To remove that, get a clean towel, special emphasis on clean. Put your cream cheese in it and squeeze as much as you can. If you have block cream cheese, you do not need to do this. Cakes are done and I will let them cool in the pan for about 20 minutes. I made red velvet cake and cream cheese frosting, no dripping one time. Someone on the internet said to add cornstarch to thicken it. Guys, the only thing that came out of that was a weird aftertaste. It was still very runny. This is the amount of water I got from a 300 gram cream cheese pack. Let it air dry for a bit before you use it. While the cake cooled on the wire rack, let's make some cream cheese frosting. I have about 250 grams of butter and the squeezed cream cheese. Mix that until everybody is nice and smoothly combined before adding the icing sugar. I am using 500 grams total added in two batches, some vanilla extract and milk. Guys, this is a very proud and important moment for me right now. I made actual cream cheese frosting. That is thick. Wow. Cakes have cooled completely and are ready to be assembled. My first layer goes on the plate, then a generous dollop of frosting. Spread as evenly as you can. I have a heightened respect for cake decorators. It is such a hassle. Then the next layer. I'm not suggested I drizzle some of the remaining pineapple juice and well, it is not working. More frosting and the final layer. This part looks like it can take some juice and I was right. Well, I guess not. Cover with the remaining bit of frosting and I think I need a turntable. Let it set in the fridge for 30 or so minutes. I have some pecans that have been in my fridge since October and I think now is the perfect time to get rid of it. Lightly toast in the oven for about 10 minutes. The cake is well rested and some of the pecans are put on top and the remaining gets crushed and put here. It cannot go round but no one will know. No, no, not that way. You'll break it. 
first i make proper cream cheese frosting and now even the cut is straight i do not want this goodness to end and a clean cross section too what luck is this guys chew your cake that is the only advice i can give you at this point i will not even be mad if it doesn't come out nice so how does it taste i am trying to decide if i like it or not uh, okay let me try another one and another one this time with some of the nuts okay i have to say this is a pretty damn good cake i hit a home run the pineapple is very subtle and i would have liked it to be a little more pronounced i should have gotten more pecans too but then i did not know they would go so well with it i absolutely love the frosting and to think i almost gave up on this thing this cake is nothing but amazing absolutely everything goes well together it is very moist and has great texture happiness in every fuck food i totally recommend you try this out you do not even need a mixer for it i am such a proud cake mom right now i'm kind of worried my vanilla cake will be dethroned soon hey i leave the rest to you thank you guys for watching and i will see you next week don't forget to like subscribe and be happy